Hello, everybody. This is Mr. Ostis in the Counseling Office. I'm excited to be with you here today during your advisory time to share with you some updates from the Counseling Office, specifically for 10th graders. Goals for today, I uh, want to again give you some updates from the Counseling Office, talk about some things uh, like the next opportunity to request a schedule change, remind you of who your counselor is, as there have been a couple changes this year and review your graduation requirements, which we like to do every time we see you, just to make sure that you're committing those numbers to memory and making sure that you're on track. Second thing I wanna do with you today is share with you how to go to Naviance and do a career personality interest survey called Do What You Are. And we'll be doing that during the second half of this presentation. So to start, we wanna make sure that you know who your counselor is. Uh, like I said, there have been a couple of changes. We've had Ms. Hansen uh, join us again this year, and we're excited about that. If your last name is A through CH, you have Mrs. Boldus. If your last name is CI, excuse me, CI through HAI, you work with Mr. Desjardins. You have Mrs. Martinson. If your last name is HAJ through LEA. Again, I'm Mr. Ostis. I work with students LEB through NL. I also work with students who are in AVID 12. And this year I'm working with students who are receiving English language learner services. Mrs. Hansen is working with students NM through ORE. Mrs. Denson works with students ROF through SWA. She also works with AVID 9 and AVID 10. Mr. Terry at the end of the alphabet is working with students SWB through Z, as well as AVID 11 students. I wanna make sure that we review graduation requirements so you can make sure that you are on track, even as a sophomore, for on-time graduation. So to review, students need four years or 12 credits of English. You also need four years or 12 credits of social studies. Students need three full years or nine credits of math and three full years of science. You also will need to have taken and passed ESS 1 and ESS 2 as a freshman and then wellness as a sophomore. Most of you will have taken safety ed during your freshman year, but we know that some of you will have taken it during your sophomore year due to when your birthday is. And then beyond that, you'll need to take and pass three Phi Ed credits sometime before you reach the end of your senior year. You also need to have one credit of art. And then after that, you need to have 16 credits minimum of electives. If you do all of the above, uh, you will successfully meet the 66 graduation requirements uh, required for us to give you a diploma at the end of your senior year. And most of you are gonna have more than that uh, by the time you're done as a student at Rosemont High School. If you have questions about your credits or where you're at, please feel free to contact your counselor and they'd be happy to talk to you about that. The uh, next and final opportunity to request a schedule change is coming up here on November 2nd through 5th. There will again be an online form that is found on the counseling website. Before you would make a request to change a course, we would ask that you consult the closed course list and keep in mind that classes are very full and any changes would be made on a space available basis only. This year, as you know, has been very different. It's been very hard in many ways that past years have not been. And we think it's really important that you're taking steps or taking uh, maybe even extra steps to take care of yourself this year. So we wanna make sure that you're thinking about your nutrition and the food that you're putting in your body, making sure that it's good fuel to do what you need to do. We wanna encourage you to get enough sleep at night, um, whatever that number is for you to make sure that you feel rested in the morning and able to do what you need to do the next day. And we also wanna encourage you to exercise um, as you're able to, uh, especially as we're moving into winter here. It's also important that you take time to invest in really positive relationships that you have. We know that a lot of those might be taking place uh, digitally right now, but those are still really important to invest in. And we also want to encourage you to find some time to put down the screen and step away from technology and, and do something that uh, maybe doesn't have you on a, a screen or a, a keypad uh, so that you can be doing some other things with your time as well. 
Um, and that would also play into just finding a balance between doing schoolwork and the work that you need to do if you have a job or if you're working at home taking care of siblings or chores around the house. Balancing that with time for fun and time to do things that will help you recharge so that you can again uh, be the best student and you know the best person that you're able to be right now. Uh, that also extends to uh, academic wellness. We want to make sure that you're taking steps with school looking so different to do the best job that you can as a student. So it's going to be really important, uh, whether you're currently in the hybrid model or working as in digital academy, uh, that you have created a space at home where you know that you'll be able to most effectively get work done. We think it's really important that you build a routine for your day and for your work for when you're going to be getting your schoolwork done. We also think it's really important that you keep track of what you have to do um, and doing that in a way that works for you. So for some of you, it might be working really well to be using things like the calendar on Schoology. Others of you might really enjoy doing things like keeping a paper pencil copy um, of what you need to do in a planner. And it's really important that whatever works for you, that you can stay on top of the tasks that are coming up that have deadlines go with them. Uh, again, putting away any unnecessary technology when you're doing schoolwork. We know that you're going to be on your iPad or on a computer, but having the phone out of the room so that you're not uh, tempted to be checking texts or be on social media, uh, that can be a great way to help you stay focused and make sure that you are probably not needing to put in more time than you typically would on school because of those distractions. And then we also want to encourage you to reach out for help if you need it. That could be to your teacher. It could be to your counselor, uh, or it could also be uh, coming to school and using the National Honor Society drop-in tutoring, which is happening four days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, from 145 to 315 in the student center. There are students who would love to help you uh, with your work if you would like to do that. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna transition from those updates to looking at doing a career and personality interest inventory that's called Do What You Are. Do What You Are is gonna ask you a series of questions about you and then a series of questions about careers that you think you might be interested in. And based on your answers, it's going to give you some, I think, really interesting data about your personality uh, and about what careers might be a good fit for you. And it's gonna give you an opportunity to think about those results and even uh, rank if you think that the results were accurate. To do, do what you are, what we're going to need to do is have you log into Naviance. And I want to walk you through how to get there uh, in case you don't remember from using it in past years. So you can see up on the screen that I've gone to the Rosemount High School homepage. And I've highlighted the Families tab. That's where you're going to go. You're going to click the Families tab. And then over on the left-hand side, you're going to see a tab for counseling. I'm going to have you go ahead and click into counseling. And then you're going to scroll down on that page. And you're going to start to see some tabs for different resources. Uh, you can see here we've got general resources. There's resources for academics. There's resources for college career. And there's resources for social emotional. And I do want to encourage you at some point to go ahead and, and peruse those different resources. And uh, there's probably something in there that could be helpful to you at some time, especially if you're thinking about uh, college and career things even now as a 10th grader or what you would like to be doing after you graduate. And that's of course what we're kind of looking at today. So from there, what I'm gonna have you do is go ahead and click on college career. Then you're going to click on Naviance students. And then you can see I've highlighted the link that will get you into Naviance students. From there, you're going to get to a page that looks like this that says, Welcome to Naviance students. And you're going to go ahead and click on students. And that will take you to a login page. Now, this should look the same for all of you. Uh, you can see a couple of things here. First off, you can see that I've highlighted where it says Demo Ostis. Of course, Demo is not my first name, but I'm just running a demo for me. You should see your name uh, up there. And then you can see there's a series of tabs over here, uh, Home, Colleges, Careers, where I'm going to ask you to look for this survey 
is in the About Me tab, which I've circled here with an arrow. So you're going to go ahead and click into the About Me tab. And then from there, you're going to go down on the drop down. You'll see things like My Assessments, My Surveys. I want you to click on My Assessments. And then from there, I'd like for you to click on Do What You Are. That will take you into the actual survey. You're going to see a screen that looks like this. You can see up at the top that there's going to be a couple different steps with this, um, but it's telling you that this should really only take you about 15 minutes when you go in to do it. The first part of this survey will be you uh, answering a series of questions where you're going to be given kind of two different descriptions of an individual. And based on those two descriptions, you need to choose the one that sounds like it's the most like you. Now, you might read one of them and say, well, none of these sound like me, but it's, uh, it's going to force you to pick one of them. So you need to pick the one that seems like it is the most like you. Uh, there are no right or wrong answers for this. Uh, again, you're just picking what feels the most like you. And I do usually encourage students to not sit there for a really long time with any one question. I think what you uh, is kind of your initial reaction to what sounds like you is usually the right choice. So that'll be the first step of this. The second step will be you're going to be given a series of different career clusters. Uh, those could be things like careers in agriculture or careers in human services or careers in education or finance or STEM. There's going to be a number of them. And what you're going to do is you're going to read the description about what those jobs could be like. And then you're going to have to choose on a scale of one to five if it sounds like something you would not want to do or if it sounds like something you would really like to do or something in between. After you've completed that, it's going to give you some results. You're gonna get a score report that looks like this at the end, and it's gonna break down your personality into four different categories. Sometimes we call this a type indicator. Um, I actually took this so you can see this is my actual score. It gives me a four letter code at the top. ENFP. Uh, those all uh, relate to certain a certain personality characteristics. So for instance, and it's choosing between two different ones. So you can see here it says that I'm an extrovert. The other option would be an I, which would be for introverts. I, it says I am a feeler, and the other one would be someone who is thinking. There's intuitive or intuition down here, and the other one would be an S for sensing. And then I have perceiving, and the other one would be judging. And you can see that there is a description of uh, each of those and what they mean very briefly below. Below your score report, you're going to have an opportunity to rate if you think that this matches your personality. And there'll be a little bit more information with that. It will also give you a couple of paragraphs to read that describe uh, what a person with this sort of personality code for this particular test uh, what their personality might look like. And then you're going to get an opportunity to say if you think that that sounds a lot like you or if it doesn't sound like you at all or, again, somewhere in between. It's been fun in years past because it feels like when I ask that question to students, uh, typically most hands go up feeling like the, uh, the score, the code that you got, and that description of your personality was at least somewhat accurate. Um, and so that tells us that hopefully you get, you're getting some good information about yourself by taking this test or this personality inventory. After that, you're going to have the opportunity to go in and it's going to note uh, different careers that might be a good fit based on what you said and based on uh, your personality being a match for those careers. So it will go through uh, all of the different career clusters that were noted and kind of break it down into if you were interested or not and if you fit. I put up a screenshot here from me for education and training, specifically because you can see that it has school counselor listed here, which is of course what I do. Um, if I wanted to know more about one of these careers, what I would do is I would click into that career and it would give me a variety of information. One thing it would do is it would tell me about particular tasks uh, or knowledge that is needed to, to do this job successfully. Uh, it would also tell me about what sort of education or training might be needed to do this career. 
Uh, so it might even link to different majors that you could pursue uh, after graduating from high school to prepare you for that career. And then you could go even deeper in and it would tell you uh, what sort of schools might also offer that sort of major or training opportunity. Another one that students have really enjoyed in the past is it will also link to wages. So you can see how much a career typically pays, uh, both for Minnesota or other states, as well as an average across the nation. I want to end today just by making sure that you, again, know who your counselor is. We are available to help. We want to help. Uh, you can email us or you can send us a Schoology message. Uh, you can also go to the counseling website. And if you scroll to the bottom, there is a picture of all of the counselors. And there is a way that you can directly request a meeting with us, uh, either via Zoom or in person, by using our Calendly link. So with that, I want to thank you for paying attention. Uh, I hope that you enjoy taking Do What You Are. And we'd love to talk to you about your results or any other questions you have in the counseling office. So take care and have a great rest of your day.